Hello and welcome to this Doctor of Medicine session at the University of Queensland. I'm sorry we're not meeting in person, but due to the challenges of social distancing, hopefully uh, you can enjoy this online. My name is Stuart Carney. I am the Medical Dean at the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Queensland. I'm a psychiatrist by background, trained in an epidemiologist, and a little bit more about that in a moment. But as I reflect on my journey here at the University of Queensland, I've been here for just over three years. I remember when I was previously Dean of the Medical School at King's College London, wasn't looking to move, but had just got in touch, encouraged me to come out to Brisbane, uh, was uh, enticed, of course, by the fabulous weather. Beautiful one day here in Brisbane and perfect the next. But also, if you look above the columns at the main building, here at the Faculty of Medicine at the University of Queensland, you might also understand why I was attracted to come here as well. There are a lot of great medical schools around the world. King's College London has a great medical school where I was before. Harvard has a great medical school too. Here in Australia, there are also many great medical schools. University of Melbourne has a great medical program. But only one medical school in the world goes by the title of the medical school, and that is our medical school here at the University of Queensland. The University of Queensland is truly a global university. We are ranked within the top 50 universities across the world, a research intensive university that benefits from eight research institutes. Research institutes who are helping to push back the boundaries of knowledge uh, and assist us in finding um, strategies to, uh, to deal with COVID-19. Indeed, Paul Young leads one of the, the teams, one of 50 or so teams around the world seeking to identify a vaccine uh, to, uh, to prevent COVID-19. One of my other colleagues, Professor David Patterson at the UQ Centre for Clinical Research, uh, is leading a major multi-centre uh, clinical trial to see if we can identify therapeutic interventions to ameliorate the symptoms, to reduce uh, the impact of COVID-19. But also as a comprehensive university, our uh, Faculty of Medicine sits, you have the opportunity to benefit uh, from a range of education opportunities across that entire university. Our university is indeed animated uh, and, and built on a range of wonderful education opportunities from engineering, IT, music, uh, through to healthcare. Uh, and that enables and ensures that we uh, graduate uh, medical professionals who are well rounded. But as a psychiatrist, I was also attracted to the values that animate our university here, uh, the University of Queensland, and in particular, supporting our people. A bit more about that later. For a number of years, we at the University of Queensland have been grappling with some of the enormous challenges that we face within healthcare. These challenges include the challenges of an aging population. Thanks to significant public health and healthcare developments, we are seeing people live a lot longer. Now the majority of older adults um, live fulfilling sort of healthy lives. However, they're at greater risk uh, of chronic conditions and they are greater users of our healthcare system. We very much value their contributions to society, very much value uh, them being part of our communities. But we as a, as a society uh, need to ensure that we can better support and care for them to live fulfilling lives into their old age. Indeed, by 2050, about 20% of the world's population will be over the age of 65. And we know that people over the age of 65 are greater users of our healthcare systems. And one of the reasons they're greater users of healthcare systems is because of chronic conditions. Chronic conditions such as asthma, such as chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, such as heart disease, such as arthritis, such as depression. And these chronic conditions uh, not only impact on our quality of lives, but can also be associated with uh, premature mortality. Now, historically, healthcare systems have been organized around the care of individuals with single conditions. And indeed, if you have a single condition, you are likely to benefit and enjoy better outcomes if you see a specialist in that field. But for the 23% of Australians living with two or more chronic conditions, the evidence would suggest that their outcomes are best served by seeing a generalist, somebody who is able to work with them to balance uh, the risks and benefits uh, of a combination of therapeutic interventions. So for that 23% of Australians living with chronic conditions, a proportion which is growing, 
how we need to rethink how we provide our healthcare. And that highlights the critical importance of our general practitioners, of general internal physicians, general pediatricians, gerontologists, and indeed general psychiatrists like myself. Now within the world of mental health, for some time we've known that individuals living with severe and enduring mental illness such as bipolar disorder, such as schizophrenia, such as severe depression, are at risk of dying earlier than the general population. Indeed, the data would suggest that if you have a severe and enduring mental illness, you are at greater risk of dying up to 18 years earlier than the general population. Now, why is that? Around 15% of the premature mortality can be explained by suicide. We, as a community, as a society, as healthcare professionals, can all do our bit of working with individuals to reduce the risk of suicide. But 85% of the premature mortality is as a consequence of our, our physical health conditions, partly as a consequence of our failure as a healthcare system to adequately support and address the physical health needs of individuals with severe and enduring mental illness. Now, I for one think that that is shameful. We need to rethink how we care for individuals with mental health conditions, but it illustrates the importance of a much more holistic way of caring for people. Now, these concerns animate what we're about as a medical program. They're very much at the heart of what drives our, our faculty and of what drives our, our medical program. So as a medical program, we're looking to you, our future medical doctors, uh, to be caring and compassionate capable of growing from the first day of your internship or your residency uh, and growing throughout your career as critical scientific thinkers, pushing back the boundaries of knowledge, socially accountable, really sort of grappling with some of the wicked problems that we as a community, as a society uh, are dealing with, with a truly global perspective. And there are a few medical programs in the world that are as globally connected as the University of Queensland. Our medical program is a graduate medical program. It is a four-year full-time uh, program leading to the Doctor of Medicine or MD degree. The first uh, two years are offered here in Australia, in and around Brisbane, with the first year primarily located uh, at the St. Lucia campus, on our main university campus. But as a truly global medical program, we are privileged uh, through our partnership with the Oshner Healthcare System to also be able to offer clinical placements uh, for our students in the United States. We are a truly socially accountable medical program, very much recognizing the additional healthcare burdens experienced by rural and remote communities as well. And we have a very vibrant rural clinical school, which is also part of our rich and diverse community, with four regional centers uh, around Queensland, Toronto, Rockhampton, Bundaberg, and Harvey Bay, which also provide opportunities for you to better understand how we can provide care for individuals living in rural and remote communities. Now, our medical program is divided into two parts. It is truly an integrated program, but those first two years provide uh, opportunities for you to gain early clinical uh, experience, early meaningful clinical experience, at the same time as developing your knowledge and understanding of the clinical sciences, of public health, ethics, and professional practice. Um, and research methods to strengthen and, uh, and, and develop your skills. Years three and four are primarily located within the clinical community. They provide a breadth of experience, opportunities for you to not only uh, care for the acutely ill patient in our hospital settings, but also uh, to develop your understanding of how we better care for individuals with chronic conditions, individuals with comorbidities, both in the hospital setting, but more importantly within the community setting wonderful, rich opportunities for you to learn in general practice in rural and remote communities and also in mental health. In your final year, there's a great opportunity for you to undertake uh, an elective be taken here in Australia or abroad, an opportunity for you to test career hypotheses, to really work out where your niche is uh, as you begin to explore uh, where you want to specialise uh, as a future healthcare professional. We also provide wonderful research opportunities uh, at the University of Queensland in a research intensive environment. Uh, clinical and academic colleagues are very keen to nurture the next generation of research leaders, people committed to pushing back the boundaries of knowledge. They're only an email away. Whilst everybody gets a thorough grounding here at the University of Queensland's medical program in research methods, uh, and that's provided certainly in the first two years of, of the medical program, there are opportunities for you also uh, to, uh, to undertake research projects in your free time, 
some of our research uh, scholarships are also available. And for those who really want to push back the boundaries of knowledge, why not intercalate and do a um, Master's of Public Health and a PhD degree concurrent uh, with your medical program, or even a Master of Philosophy or PhD. So you can really sort of push back those boundaries of, boundaries of knowledge uh, and, and explore a topic in, in much greater depth. Now, thank you for listening about the medical program. As I mentioned, I'm a psychiatrist uh, as well, and I think what sort of is, is, is very much at the heart of uh, me and, uh, and my clinical colleagues here at the Faculty of Medicine is wanting to ensure that you flourish and thrive within our program. We have a very important medical student support team there to support you uh, as you learn as medical students, uh, and everybody is allocated a personal advisor from the first day. We also have a great uh, UQ Medical Society, a student-led society that provides a true sort of community uh, to help support you in the transition uh, to the medical program throughout uh, your four years as a medical student. Indeed, they run some, run some fabulous uh, events. Casting my mind back around three years ago, I think a number of our students hadn't got the memo that I'd started uh, as Dean of the Medical School, and I uh, went to one of their social events, uh, what they call sort of a coffee club, uh, wonderful sort of uh, jazz afternoon and I was introduced by a student to a group of students as Dean Carney. I think the students I was introduced to failed to understand that Dean was my title and not my name and, uh, and then that of course became uh, in, a, in a wonderful Australian way my nickname uh, for, the, uh, for the next few years here. So I'm um, uh, known to a number of our students as Dino. But also as a psychiatrist, um, I also sort of reflect on sort of the journey of a number of individuals coming into medicine. Now, many of us come into medicine and, and, and the caring professions because of a desire to sort of to, to truly sort of care uh, for individuals and to make a difference. Now, there are lots of ways in which you, our uh, future sort of uh, leaders, can make a difference. You can make a difference through management, you can make a difference through engineering, you can make a difference through research, through healthcare. Medicine is only one vehicle to truly make a difference. The world is, sadly, uh, has too many individuals who are unhappy. The last thing we want as a community is for you to be unhappy. I do hope that I've enthused and inspired you to consider the University of Queensland, but don't take my word for it. Speak to students, speak to others, uh, do your research to determine whether this is a good fit. What we want is for you to make a decision about where is the best fit for you whether that is a doctor, whether that is a nurse, whether that is a physiotherapist, whether that is a manager, whether that is a, uh, as a researcher. There are lots of ways in which you can truly make a difference. And there are lots of great medical schools out there uh, where you can sort of uh, develop your clinical skills over the next four years. Uh, but if the University of Queensland it is a good fit for you, I look forward to welcoming you at, at some stage in the future. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Stuart. Hello, my name is Nicole Shepherd, and I'm the Academic Lead for Medical Student Selection. I'm here to explain the application processes we use at the University of Queensland for the Medical Program. Every year we have approximately 460 places available. 280 of these are for domestic students and 180 for international students. We have two entry pathways for domestic students. One is provisional entry, and that's for current U12s, and the other is graduate entry, and that is for any person who's completed a degree in the last 10 years. So because the University of Queensland Medical Program is a postgraduate degree, we have a provisional entry pathway for current U12s, and that means that we hold a place for them once they've completed their undergraduate degree. So to apply for this, students must be in their final year of secondary school at the time of application. They must take the University Clinical Aptitude Test for Australia and New Zealand. And then we rank applicants based on their UCAT scores and eligible applicants will be invited to participate in a multiple mini interview. For the graduate entry pathway, Students must have completed a key degree within the last 10 years and have a grade point average of greater than or equal to five. They must take the graduate medical school admission test and we rank 50% on grade point average and 50% on the GAMSAT score. 
and eligible applicants will be invited to participate in a multiple mini interview. We have other adjustment schemes and alternative entry pathways. 28.5% of the places are bonded medical places. And students who accept a bonded medical place are required by the Australian government to uh, work in an area of workforce shortage after gaining fellowship with their chosen specialisations medical college. 28% of all places are set aside for students from a rural background. Applicants must have lived in a geographic area classified as rural for a specified time period. We have an alternative pathway for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students, and these students are, based, are assessed based on academic ability, employment history, personal interests and references. We have some other adjustment schemes where your ranking can be boosted. For example, the students who study Math C or language other than English during senior can have extra points added to their rank. See the website for more information on these adjustment schemes. The medical program is an academic demanding program and we found that students who didn't study science really struggled in the first two years. So from 2022, all commencing medical students will need to have completed two subject prerequisites. These are integrated cell and tissue biology and system physiology. So even if students are doing a Bachelor of Arts, they need to complete these science prerequisites before they commence the medical program. Thank you.